Hello everyone, it's Benny here, and in this video what we're going to be doing is we are going to be we're going to be drawing things using OpenGL. So, let's get started. But before we actually do that, I'm going to sort of clean this code up a bit, make it a little bit more organized. So, let's do that. First, I'm going to create a method called just init display. You can call it create display if you want, but this is where I'm going to put this code. That way we just have a dedicated method for creating the display, and we don't have to worry about all the complicated code that goes into it. We can just say init display. Now, I actually want this method to be at the bottom. I'm also going to extract the game loop into its own method. So I'm going to create a game loop method, and I'm going to put it here. And again, it's just for organization purposes. So now, with that out of the way, Let's create two new methods. The first is going to be initGL. This is where we're going to initialize everything we need to initialize for OpenGL to work. I'm going to put that just below the, the game loop, so private static void initGL. And I'm also going to create a cleanup method. This method is just going to do any final operations we need to do before the program closes. So it's going to free any memory we've used, it's going to do uh, get rid of anything extra, you know, just clean up at the end of the program. So there we go, we have successfully organized our program so far. So now let's actually start using OpenGL. So very first thing we have to do is we have to import it. So I'm just gonna go here and import it. And our importer, to the best of my knowledge, does not do it automatically. I know it doesn't do it in Eclipse. I've never actually tried the automatic importing for NetBeans but yet, but to the best of my knowledge, it doesn't do it automatically, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So we're going to import static. Now, a static import is a lot like a normal import, except instead of importing more or less a class that y you can use, you're actually importing everything that's static in that class. So any static methods or any static variables, you'll be able to use those as if they were part of your class. So, the, what we're going to do is we're going to import OpenGL, that's under org.lwjgl.opengl. And now we have to select the OpenGL, we select GL for OpenGL, and then what version? I'm just going to do 1.1 one, one for version 1.1, 1. 1. and there we go. So now we can select anything in OpenGL 1.1. I'm just going to take everything. So there we go. We now have everything in the earliest version of OpenGL imported. And just for reference, you do want to import the earliest version of OpenGL that you can, because the higher up version of OpenGL you're using, the fewer people can actually use your program. So, you know, you generally want to use the earliest version possible. So there we go. And now, let's start initializing OpenGL. So, if you remember from the last video, we talked about how there's three types of matrices in OpenGL. There's the model matrix, the model view matrix, excuse me, the projection matrix, and the texture matrix. So, when you first start OpenGL, it defaults in the model view matrix, which is good and all, but what we're going to do is we're going to initialize OpenGL. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to set up the projection matrix so that we don't have to worry about it later. So, the very first thing we have to do is we have to switch to dealing with the projection matrix. The way we do this is we first we type GL. This is the prefix for every method that's part of OpenGL. Now, we're going to want to change the matrix mode to the projection matrix. So, matrix mode. And there we go. And now I have to select which matrix we want to select. So I want the projection matrix, so I'll do gl underscore, which is a prefix for all OpenGL constants, and just projection. And that will select the projection matrix. So now any further operations that we do with OpenGL after this line of code will all be done in the projection matrix. So just keep that in mind. So now we're in the projection matrix. What do we want to do? Well first, Whatever's there, I just want to get rid of it. I want to start absolutely from scratch. This way, we don't have to worry about any 
conflicting information, any overriding information, and dealing with information that we don't want to. Because that can end up with some really weird errors, and you might not want to, you not really know how to fix them. So, start off with, we're just going to clear whatever's in the projection matrix as it is. The way we do this is we just do gl load identity. And if you remember from math, the identity matrix is a matrix where anything multiplied by the identity equals itself. So when we load the identity matrix, that adds essentially just clearing the projection matrix, or whatever matrix we have currently focused. So if you ever want to clear the matrix, this is how you do it. GL load identity. So now, you've got the projection matrix, we've completely cleared it, what do we want to do now? Well now, if you remember in the last video, we had two sort of common projections that we could do. We can either project it as it literally is, or we can project it the way our eye sees it. And the two terms for that is orthographic means the way it literally is, and perspective is a term for the way our eye sees it. And you know, we just want it as it literally is right now. We don't need to adjust it so that our eye sees it. So I'm just going to do the orthographic view. So GL ortho for orthographic. And there we go. Now this takes six parameters. So get ready. Okay. So the very first parameter is, well, I should say the first four parameters deal with the view space. And the way this works is you're essentially making a square. And when you put points in there, then OpenGL will be he finding, will be drawing based on the square you give it. And I realize this doesn't make a lot of sense now, but it will make a lot more sense when we start drawing things. So for now, this square that I want everything to be drawn relative to, I just want that to be the screen. So first off, what point do you start at? Well, I'm starting at zero, and I'm going to the width of the screen. So I could do display dot get width. That will get me whatever the width of my display is. And now the same thing for y. So I'll start at zero and display dot get height. And there we go. That gets me the display. So next thing we need to do is we need to set up the fr dimension of this because OpenGL automatically handles three dimensions. So we can set up how far into three-dimensional space we want to see. And I, per personally, for now, I'm just going to be doing two-dimensional drawings because 3 d is a little bit too advanced for the first thing you do, in my opinion. So I'm just going to set it up for 2D. The way we do this is first we do negative 1. That will actually be a plane behind the camera. So essentially we're setting up a sort of square for us to view in. And 1. And this is sort of the default that it'll display anything that's on the z-coordinate between negative 1 and 1. This is what this is doing. So, there we go. And I know this math is probably a little confusing to you, but believe it or not, this does make a lot more sense once you start drawing, because all this stuff really is dealing with drawing. So now lastly, that's all we really want to do in the projection matrix. So I'm just going to switch back to the model view matrix, because that's where we do almost anything. So I do this by going to matrix mode, and selecting GL model view. So there we go, we've created a projection for our OpenGL program. So there actually is one last thing we want to do before we finish the initialization of OpenGL. And that is setting something called the clear color. Now, when you're drawing with OpenGL, you sort of have two frames you're drawing to. And every time you draw to a frame, you generally want to get rid of everything that's there before you start drawing onto it. So the clear color is essentially what color we set the frame to every time we clear it. So, and by default it's black, but it's good to sort of explicitly tell OpenGL what color you want it to clear to. So the way we do this is we do GL clear color and it takes four parameters. The red first three are the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue. 
I want black, so that's 0, 0, and 0. And lastly is how opaque you want the color to be. So like, if you want it to be a transparent clear color, you could set the amount of transparency here. But, you know, I just want it to be completely full on black, so I'll just put on 1. And that'll be completely opaque. So there we go, we have finished initialization of OpenGL. Congratulations. So now, let's actually start drawing. We're going to do all of our drawing in the game loop. In this big loop right here. Actually, I can just delete this game loop comment, because we don't need it anymore. So first off, let's talk about display.update. Display.update is going to show whatever we've drawn so far. So we're going to want to do all of our drawing before there. So let's go ahead and start drawing. The first thing we're going to want to do is just clear whatever er, the frame already has drawn on it. Because that way, we don't end up ha having to draw over a picture already there. It's like, if I it's like, instead of starting with a completely blank canvas, I start painting over the Mona Lisa. I mean, it doesn't really work out very well if I try to do that. So we're just going to get rid of everything. We're going to start completely clear. So the way we do this, we do GL, clear, and now we have to specify what we want to clear, because there's actually a couple of things we want to clear. And OpenGL stores all of its, the, um, all the colors that are in information that's on the frame in something called the color buffer. So we're going to want the GL color buffer. We actually have to do underscore bit. I was never really completely clear why they added that extra underscore bit there. So if anyone wants to clear that up in the comments, you can, but you, you don't need the underscore bit for some odd reason. I don't really understand why. So there we go. We now have a completely blank frame. Now we're going to start drawing a square. But before we do that, I actually forgot something in our initialization. We have to disable something called the depth test. And what this does is it keeps track of all... Th what it does is this is what keeps track of all the information that's needed to make something look properly in 3D. And while we're drawing 2D things right now, we don't need to keep track of all that extra information. So I'm just going to go GL, Disable, and I'll disable the depth test. That way we don't have to worry about having a whole bunch of extra information flying around about how everything should be looking in 3D. No, we're, we're drawing in 2D again, so we're just gonna stick to 2D. So, sorry about that, I, I forgot. And now we can actually start drawing. So the way we do this is everything that's drawn in OpenGL is drawn between a GL begin and a GL end statement. These act as sort of, uh, I guess you could say, markers they tell OpenGL explicitly where drawing code begins and drawing code ends. That way it can, you know, it can distinguish that from the rest of your OpenGL code. So, let's go ahead and do that. I do GL begin and GL end. Now in GL begin, we have to tell OpenGL what we want it to draw, because it can draw a couple of things. It can draw polygons, just make shapes based on whatever points we draw. We can make it draw squares, we can make it draw triangles, we can make it draw lines, points, we can and make it draw all sorts of different things. But in our case we're just drawing a square, so we're going to do GL underscore quads, which is short for quadrilaterals. And the reason it's plural is because you can actually draw multiple shapes in here and we'll sort of link them together, but we just want to draw one, so we're not going to worry about that shape linking just yet. So, let's begin drawing. So first off, I'm going to go over to paint.net, and I'm going to show you my amazingly poorly drawn image, because this is going to need a tiny bit of explaining. Now, the way OpenGL draws things is you specify four, five, however many points there are in your shape. In this case, it's square, so it's four points. So I just specify point a point here, 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 and here. And OpenGL would sort of like draw a square like this, and then would fill it in with some color of some kind. Yeah, I'm an amazing artist, I know. B but, yeah, but OpenGL doesn't just draw it directly based on the pixels on the screen. 
And the reason it doesn't do that is because OpenGL, if it did that, then it would be... He, well, let's say I'm drawing it to a canvas at 800 by 600 right now. So I draw a square that's right here. And there we go. But then later I say, you know, I didn't actually want my screen to be 800 by 600. I want it to be 1920 by 1080. All of a sudden, my screen would be like all the way up here and over here. But my square would still be like that really small thing in the corner. So it's just a way of making your drawings resolution independent. Or it has a way of doing that. And that's what all the stuff in GL Orfo right here does. These four parameters right here. You're specifying a sort of coordinate system for you to draw in. And that's what I have illustrated with here with the zeros and the thirties. In this case I drew my coordinate system to from zero to thirty, but when we actually do it, we're just drawing it to the size of the screen because, you know, I think it's personally easier to work with pixels. And uh, the good thing is OpenGL will scale that to look like however big our screen is, so we don't have to worry about if it's ever changed. So, the way this works is you essentially have a coordinate system like this, and there's you no know, points on the coordinate system. Obviously this isn't drawn to scale. So, what you do is you'd specify points like here, 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 and here, based on the coordinate system, not pixels on the screen. And that's, that way OpenGL can simply, you know, avoid the big resolution scaling error. So that's why on Earth we have this. And that's why we're going to be specifying things the way we are. If we wanted to, we could change the things in here to be a different coordinate system, but we have it set up like the display. So now that we understand that, let's actually start drawing a square, finally. Now, like I said, we need to draw based on points, so I'm going to do something called GL Vertex. Now, G OpenGL actually has a couple of different ways you can make vertex or vertices. Vertexes and vertices, I believe, are both correct, so whichever you prefer. So we have to specify explicitly how many pieces of information we're giving it and of what type. The way, Since we're doing two-dimensional stuff, I'm going to give it two pieces of information, and they're going to be floating point pieces of information. And that's just, again, part of OpenGL's name convention. So now we need two po points, an x and a y coordinate. And this is where the first point in drawing the square is going to be put. I personally, I'm just going to put this at the origin, so 0, comma, 0. And this should put the point right there. See my amazing circle? Yeah. So, there, there we go. We have now have a point at the origin. But we need four points to draw a square, so I'll just make another one. And this one, I'm going to go up from here to here. So... I'm going to go to 0, comma, I'm going up, so I'm going to go up to 64. And now my next point I'm going to need it to be about right here, so I'm going to not minimize that, but go to GL Vertex 2F, 64, comma, 64. That should put it there, because that's moving at the same location on Y, but moving over an X. And finally, we need to make this point. The way we do this is it's on the same point in Y, but it's at zero. Excuse me, it's the same point on X, but zero on Y. So 64 on X, zero on Y. Now this should draw a square. Now before you go off and run, there's actually a couple of things we need to do before we actually run this. Unfortunately. So first thing is this one's actually optional, but we can specify a color for the square. By default it's drawing it in white, but I think it's kind of nice to make it any color we want. So I'm going to just do GL color, and again this is multiple ways of putting it in. I'm going to be doing it with the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue, that, so RGB. So I'm going to need three parameters, and they'll all be floating point values. And the amount of R between 0 and 1, I'm going to have 0 0.25, and I'll do F to explicitly state the floating point value. I'll do, I don't know, 0 0.75 green and 0 0.5 blue. I'll just do whatever color this is. I'm not actually quite sure, but 
we'll figure it out. So there we go. So now we have some color that we're drawing our square in. And lastly, we need to create the cleanup method. Fortunately, Lightweight Java Game Library handles all the OpenGL cleanup for us in a single method, so we can actually just do display.destroy. This will automatically do all the OpenGL cleanup we need, and we don't have to worry about it. So, there we go. That should be just about everything. And if we did everything right, when I hit run, we should be seeing a square. So, let's hit the magic run button and see what happens. And it's running. And... We see we've drawn a square. Congratulations, you've done your first and probably least exciting thing you'll ever do with OpenGL. But hey, congratulations. If you've made it this far, you've managed to draw a square. And I know you're probably thinking that that's a lot to go through just to draw a square. But once you draw more complicated things, like uh, maybe some 3D stuff like a cube, or maybe you're drawing a 3D skyscraper in explicit detail, you're gonna really appreciate this workflow once you get to drawing those big, really complicated things. But for now, this is the way OpenGL is done in the most basic sense. And yeah. So, thank you, I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video, where we will be doing some slightly more interesting things. So thank you, and see you.